It's interesting. Despite the dozens and dozens of different pharmacological compounds that exist, the one I've been asked over and over again to cover this past month is MK777, or acetamarin. You'd think it's just a twist of MK677, which is known as ibutamarin as well, a non-peptide growth hormone secretagogue receptor agonist that's already widely discussed by gym bro influencers, bodybuilders, Mike Israetel, as we just talked about, and not to mention the fact that I've covered MK677 extensively, its mechanism, its risks, its existing body of research. I'm here to tell you that the hype surrounding MK777 appears to be a lie. It's looking like advertised deception, and I'm going to keep this brief. Honestly, I didn't even want to make this video because I actually enjoy reading research, and there's none to read here. From its name to its supposed chemical structure, this compound is a product of marketing, not of science. This isn't to say MK677 is the same, because it's not. There's actual clinical backing. Ibutamarin was developed by a pharmaceutical company. MK, the prefix of MK677, is part of Merck's internal compound designation system. We've covered its history, it was clinically worked up, and it's a compound actively being pursued for growth hormone deficiency efficiency in children. MK777, on the other hand, was not developed by Merck. It's not undergoing any preclinical or clinical evaluation. And if I had to guess, although I'm not a legal expert, the people selling it probably don't want Merck finding out about its name. I'm not going to post images from the gray market sites selling it not for human consumption, but I will repeat their claims. Greater affinity for the ghrelin growth hormone secretagogue receptor than MK677, greater muscle selectivity, reduced hunger stimulation, all supposedly because it features a fluorinated thioether backbone that resists first pass metabolism. Now, I suppose we can't completely ignore anecdote. Some people on Reddit and forums do say they find it more potent, more noticeable, more helpful in achieving their individual goals, whatever those may be. Others justifiably express concern given that there's absolutely no research, no cell line studies, no animal models, no human clinical data to support these claims. There's no pharmacokinetic data demonstrating those mechanistic claims and no short or long-term safety findings. Biochemically speaking, a compound with a fluorinated thioether backbone can exhibit enhanced metabolic stability, but its overall efficacy still depends on additional pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic factors. It's a well-established strategy to improve metabolic stability and sometimes absorption. And the wild part is, companies claim to have pharmacokinetic data on MK777. They say there's improved absorption and an elimination half-life of 8 to 10 hours, but there's no research indicating this data even exists. I know the compound appears to have been created by Chinese compounding companies, but I literally cannot find a shred of data, not in mice, not in other animal models, demonstrating the findings these sellers describe. It appears to me that they're pulling data out of thin air. Where did they get these half-life claims? What preclinical data exists? Under what circumstances was this research conducted? And hey, I'm open to changing my point of view. Those of you who've been here since the beginning know that when new research emerges, my takes can change, and they have in the past. The purpose of this channel is to evaluate the data at hand. If you want endless promo about MK777, I can almost guarantee some channels will blow it out of proportion, but for me, this is what you get, and right now, we all get nothing because nothing is what exists, at least as far as I can dig up. I'm sure those of you who requested this video might find my take disappointing, but probably expected it by now. MK777, to the best of my knowledge does exist, but at the same time it doesn't. Well, it does if you're talking about MK0777, a real compound Merck developed for schizophrenia, but this isn't that. Acetamarin seems to be a marketing term based on research supposedly done by companies and gray market vendors that simply cannot be found. And despite many sellers claiming it's been in preclinical study, there's absolutely no citation to link. Not to say we won't get more data or clarity at some point, but now this is all we got. So take from that what you will. I hope you found this video helpful, but most importantly, I hope you have a good day. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy.